newish case, uh, you might be wondering how to best set up the NK Semter. So I'm going to show you what the best and most sensible configuration will be. Welcome to Machines More. On this channel, I cover all topics uh, related to PC building, especially small form factor systems like this one. Lately, I have been really enjoying the NK M3 in all of its 19 liter glory. And I use this one to test out the Nocto D15 G2 Chromax and A14 G2 Chromax for the launch, uh, which is what we've got here still. Uh, it's wild. In the weeks that I've built this and now, this system is actually appreciated just because of the, uh, the DDR5 market. But yeah, I made one change. I put the Lanley SP1000P on the outer side panel previously. For the configuration testing, I set it up to where it's a little bit more conventional. So it's on the inner uh, side panel with the fan facing out. And that does, of course, prevent a side panel fan from going there. Uh, but we'll talk about side panel fans towards the end because I wanted to test the, the main uh, points for the setup first. So the goal here is uh, for an air-cooled setup like this, what is the best way to set up the fan orientations? Now, it doesn't have to be this particular cooler. I, I know that Nocto D15 is a pricey piece of kit, so not all of you will be building with this level of cooler, uh, but the findings should be relevant even if you have a less fancy tower cooler. So just to recap, in this build, I have the Ryzen 9 9900X, which runs at about 162 watts when fully loaded. Um, that is on the ASUS B850-i Mini ITX board. The GPU here is the Radeon RX 9070, uh, about 230 watts when fully loaded. So it's sort of a, a middle ground. Uh, you know, you might have a card that uh, draws down slightly more power, slightly less power. And I think you should be able to set up your airflow up similarly and get optimal results based on my setup here. So I tested the configurations that I know to be reasonable. So a few qualifiers uh, for the A14 G2 fans that are here at the top or going to be at the bottom when the case is inverted, they're always going to run as an exhaust. So in general, running those as an intake don't really work well uh, for an air-cooled build. And uh, secondly, for the fans on the cooler and the A12 by 25 at the back panel, which is a de facto third cooling fan, they're always going to run in the same direction and we're not going to test any funny business out and uh, all the testing is with the vented side panels if you're using a glass panel i do expect the results to be a little bit different okay so the most conventional way that you could set up the case it's upright traditional layout uh, with that you can run the cooling fans to intake or draw air through the rear panel of the case or you can have them exhaust out the back in general, rear intake can be helpful in a scenario where you want to maximize your CPU temps, especially on a mini ITX board, where that rear fan is basically going to give the cooler the external ambient air. That's you know why it's a, the third cooling fan. Um, so this is particularly helpful, uh, especially so in a scenario where the inside of the case uh, is very hot, such as a scenario like gaming, where your GPU's exhaust is going to be dumped into the case. Uh, rear intake is going to mitigate that. Now, rear exhaust is also generally fine too. You'll see many cases, and not just SFF cases, but bigger cases too, that are gonna be set up this way, um, especially when you can bring in air through a vented front panel, but it doesn't have to be that way um, because uh, this is gonna help GPU temps in this particular setup with a solid front panel because you're gonna create a so-called negative pressure scenario that will att assist the GPU in intaking. Another setup you could do with the M2 and M3 is flip the case upside down for an inverted setup, and that's going to put the GPU at the top. That's going to typically benefit the graphics card a lot, since that is going to have a very direct intake from the outside of the case, because it's at the top, right? So for the test chair, I've locked the case fans at 800 RPM and the cooler fans at 1000 RPM. For the gaming test, the GPU fans are also locked down at 1700 RPM. Overall, it's a very quiet and noise optimized setup here. Let's take a look at the initial setup, which was a rear intake. In traditional mode, the temps are very, very good for the 100% CPU load test. Now, if you flip those fans around to rear exhaust, there's almost a four degree penalty, which may not be a big deal, but I always like to mention that uh, just, you know, that just means your fans can run at a lower RPM, which will be quieter. For gaming, your CPU is rarely going to be fully utilized. That means the CPU temps aren't as critical here. Uh, hopefully your GPU is running at or close to 100% though. That means you're getting all you can out of it. Uh, with the rear intake, these are okay temps in general. Uh, when we switch over to rear exhaust though, you will see the GPU temps improve significantly. 
that's a six degree swing. Uh, whereas e even though there is an impact on CPU temps, uh, it's not huge, right? And that tells me that this case is well ventilated enough. And along with the help of the case fans, um, the cooler isn't solely having to exhaust uh, just solely GPU waste heat through it. So there's a small bump there, but it's nothing to write home about. For the GPU, that's pretty significant though. The smaller fans with most card coolers do have a more prominent noise profile. So anytime you can reduce those fan speeds, it's going to make a big difference uh, acoustically. So for a general purpose or gaming build, I would lean towards rear exhaust at, as the optimal option. So I mentioned inversion, flipping the case around, uh, we can add to our data points. For your CPU heavy test, the inverted temps are going to be pretty similar. Uh, the rear intakes compared, uh, the inverted here adds a degree for rear exhausts. They are practically the same between upright and inverted. And where the inversion actually makes a lot of sense is in combined uses scenarios, because uh, this was a great setup for the M2, and it's also going to be really incredible here, as you'll see. When you invert, uh, for example, the rear intakes, the GPU sees an eight degree improvement. And for rear exhaust, it's like a nine degree improvement. And uh, one encouraging sign here is that the CPU temps don't see a significant change. What I would consider to be the best setup uh, by far is going to be the inverted rear exhaust. The GPU temps are a bit silly, but that's absolutely correct. I, I triple checked and I ran this one multiple times and this really would be great for your hot cars. You just put that thing at the top and enjoy, right? So if you're looking for the most optimal setup uh, for general purpose or gaming build, that's going to look something like this and uh, the you know, GPU is at the top and the CPU cooler, it's really going to help the GPU along. So one thing I will mention, this is a very big, high quality tower cooler. So one of the reasons the rear exhaust works so well in my testing is that this particular cooler has a lot of headroom to help out. If you're running a smaller dual tower or a single tower with a CPU that draws a similar amount of power for gaming, like in my test, you will not have as much headroom to give the GPU. But if you are properly matching your cooler to your CPU's power draw, then I definitely think the inverted rear exhaust like I have here will give you excellent results. Uh, one additional thing you can do, you can add a side panel fan with an additional rad bracket. And I added this in both intake and exhaust configurations to our optimal configuration here. And it really does not help much. Uh, if anything, it makes the CPU temps worse likely because it's interfering with the airflow around the cooler, causing some turbulence. So I think for most builds, you can skip it to save the cost of the extra panel on the fan. That's also gonna add a small amount of noise. One scenario where I do think it might be beneficial is if you are running an NVIDIA Founders Edition car, uh, since that will have a heavy reliance on a flow through cooler that exhausts right into this area here. And that's gonna really, uh, you know, the fan's gonna help with that. So yeah, inverted rear exhaust. That's uh, how I would set it up uh, for an air-cooled build. And uh, well, that'll do it for now. Hope you found that helpful. If so, please give a like. Uh, make sure you are subscribed. The links are down below for the build. Big thanks for watching.